Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. In today's video we'll be discussing the Warhammer fantasy world and the inspiration it draws from real life. More specifically looking towards the various countries and nations. So without further ado, let's begin. It's no secret that the Warhammer fantasy world is inspired by our very own real world. This is a fact that Games Workshop never really tried to hide and in truth why would they? It was very well known that many Games Workshop staff members were history buffs and obviously drawing real world inspirations does make things easier when trying to create a fully fleshed out fantasy world. In an effort to make things more streamlined we'll divide the video into a few parts, primarily focusing each part of the video on separate continents inside the Warhammer world. Obviously to begin we find ourselves in the Old World which in itself takes inspiration from Europe. Here is the largest concentration of unique races and factions within the Warhammer world so it's best to start here. The Empire of Man or Empire of Sigma depending on who you ask naturally takes inspiration from the Holy Roman Empire. Both are a multi-ethnic complex of various territories united under the rule of one man. Each of these territories are very largely independent in regards to matters that only concern mostly themselves, some being more powerful than others obviously. The Empire of Man and the Holy Roman Empire do have a figurehead known as the Emperor but he does not have complete absolute power as many believe. Instead many ruling leaders represented in Total War Warhammer as the elect accounts form the main basis of any power in the Empire. The former Imperial province now known as the Wasteland which includes the free city of Marienburg represents the golden age of the Netherlands, republican city states that were famous for a rich mercantile background. As with the wasteland breaking from the empire of man so too did the Netherlands break away from the holy roman empire. The halflings take direct inspiration from the works of J.R.R. Tolkien famously known in the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, small child sized men and women who have a love for food, parties and a good drink. The beastmen are inspired by how the romans describe the ancient germanic tribes bestial savages with no love of art or science. Often described as living in the darkest locations known to man, the complete opposite of what real civilization should be. It is because of this that they are represented as half men half animal hybrids almost like some of the pagan deities that were often vilified by the religious romans. Post Catholicism of course. The island of Albion and its inhabitants are inspired by Celtic Britain and Ireland. More primal but a very spiritual people than most. Many tribal figureheads known as druids act as teachers, healers and judges throughout their society. Fair Bretonia is inspired by feudal France with some English influences. Obviously taking into account the Arthurian legend especially when in regards to the Lady of the Lake. Here we see strong proud knights who present themselves to be very chivalrous atop of majestic horses longbow archers and strong religious themes. And obviously the Bretonian Crusades are very much inspired by the Christian Crusades. The vampire counts take inspiration from various cultures throughout our real world's history. Naturally the more commonly known bloodline of the von Karsteins is directly inspired of the folklore surrounding Vlad Tepes also known as Vlad the Impaler and the works of Bram Stoker's Dracula novel both of which are tied to Romania. Whereas the other bloodlines are also inspired by the two original sources but also take from other cultures, generally anything which had vampires or equivalent in their folklore. The nation of Kislev is obviously inspired by the real world Slavic people, most notably those of Polish and Russian descent. They are a hardy folk, used to extreme weather conditions and a lot of their stuff has actually been taken directly from history. The perfect example of this would be the winged hussars of Poland which are featured in the Kislevite army known as the winged lancers. The Wood Elves themselves take inspiration from various sources, obviously inspired by the works of J.R.R. Tolkien but their more naturalistic themes can be traced to ancient Celtic folklore, a more tribal people but very in tune with nature. The Dwarves once again are directly influenced by J.R.R. Tolkien, you'll notice there's a bit of a theme here but that can be expected as many fantasy settings do take a lot of influence from his work. With that being said the dwarves take influence from Nordic and Scandinavian culture especially when it comes to their use of rune magic. The greenskins or orcs and goblins as they are known on the tabletop vary in cultures as there are many different sub races within the classification of greenskin. Many see the various greenskins as different more tribal and barbaric cultures of early day history with a perfect example of those being the savage orcs which are linked to the early neanderthals forest goblins being compared to native americans and so on. Obviously these are all subjective to the person interpreting the law. The skaven themselves seem to be fairly unique, 
based more on the event of the Black Death and other events which were linked to rodents. Now the Skaven themselves have been expanded upon where different clans have taken inspiration from various parts of our real world, Clan Eshin taking parts of Japanese culture being the perfect example. Lastly, we have the city-states that form the basis of Estalia, Talia and the Border Princes, which they themselves are inspired on Spain, Italy and the Balkans respectively. The theme there is very obvious, especially when looking at early history and the themes between their armies. Now we'll look towards the Southlands, which obviously resembles Africa. The nation of Araby is inspired by early Arabic culture and folklore both known for their large trading cities and ports, and early nomadic tribes. Both are a people who are used to living within the deserts, being very accustomed to the harsh temperatures. Next we have the Tomb Kings of Nehakara, which are obviously inspired by Bronze Age Ancient Egypt. A culture very much fascinated by death and the afterlife, these are also a people that built many large constructs in honour of their gods, believing that their gods would watch over them through the eyes of the constructs. Now we will look towards the far north in Norska, where one race stands out, the Warriors of Chaos and those of the men and women of Norska. These are obviously influenced by Scandinavian folklore, and how modern media also tended to represent them. They represented the Viking aspect of real world, large, very physically strong warriors that would raid across the coastal lines of the known Warhammer fantasy world and pillage to their heart's content. Now we'll look towards Ulfwan, once again, elves are inspired by J.R.R. Tolkien, however it is very much obvious that the elves of Ulfwan are very much inspired by the writings about Atlantis, an island nation which was considered to be quite the utopia. Places that were considered to be quite safe havens, but then eventually ended up being destroyed in both of their respective lore. Now we'll look towards the far west, firstly in the lands of Nargoroth, which is obviously very much inspired by the Northern Americas, here we have the Dark Elves. The Dark Elves, like all other elves, take influence from the works of J.R.R. Tolkien and also are rather inspired by the real-world slavery culture that we had way back when. In the southern reaches of the far west we have Lustria, which is obviously inspired by the southern Americas. Here we have the Lizardmen and the Amazons. Both races are very much inspired by ancient cultures that lived around the area, so Mayans, Aztecs and so on. This is very obvious when you start looking at history and then comparing it to Lizardmen culture, their architecture and their style of weaponry. Next we have the Vampire Coast and also including the Pirates of Sartosa, both of which were obviously inspired by pirate culture, more specifically around the area of the Caribbean. These were a free-thinking folk that wished to pillage and plunder for their own profit. And now we'll look towards the northern and southern Chaos Wastes, which were obviously inspired by the north and south pole of our real world. The Chaos Wastes are linked directly to the Realms of Chaos, which is where we see the Chaos Demons. The Chaos Demons themselves are directly influenced by various sources. In most cases, people draw the conclusion that they're directly influenced by various demonic entities and various pagan faiths. It's also very obvious that the Chaos Demons have taken some influence from various different authors, such as those from H.P. Lovecraft and the Cthulhu Mythos. And now we'll look towards the eastern reaches of the Warhammer world, which obviously does look like the eastern reaches of our own world, the Middle East and Asia. In the lands of the Darklands we have the Chaos Dwarves, inspired by ancient Mesopotamia, more specifically the Babylonians and the Sumerians. Near enough to them are the Mountains of Morn, which are home to the Ogre Kingdoms. The Ogres themselves are inspired by the nomadic Mongol tribes, a people who are known never to stay in one location for way too long, also known to be very destructive wherever they roamed. And because of this, both the Mongols and the Ogre Kingdoms were incredibly feared. Next we have the Nation of Ind, which is obviously inspired by the Nation of India. Both are known for their trading and their rather large pantheon of gods. Unfortunately, Ind was one of those nations in Warhammer Fantasy that never had too much fleshed out lore. The same could be said about Nippon, which not only takes inspiration from Japan, but also outright takes their name. Inspired by feudal Japan, which was known to be quite isolationist and is also isolationist in the Warhammer fantasy world, we don't really have that much lore going about them other than the fact that we know, thanks to Clan Eshin, that their armies include ninjas, samurai and so on. Yeah, this is directly taken from real world history and they didn't really try to hide it whatsoever. Which once again can also be said for our last spot in this video, the Nation of Cafe, which is inspired by China. 
Both Cathay and China had mighty empires, considered to be some of the strongest in the known world, both also creating marvels which were considered to be wonders in their respective worlds. The perfect example of this would be the Great Wall of China, which was also translated into the Warhammer fantasy world. Sometimes originality in very early games workshop lore was just not that much there. However, it is rather interesting to see how much of our real world history was implemented into the Warhammer fantasy universe. And honestly, I believe it's why so many people feel so strongly about this world, it's because they have something to relate to because it relates to something from their own history. I believe I've covered every notable race and faction, so if I've missed any, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But now I want to ask you guys a question. What do you guys think about our own real world history being interpreted in a fantasy universe? Do you guys feel more drawn to it because of it, or is it just one and the same for you? I'm rather curious to see what you guys think, because obviously Games Workshop are now working on a series known as Warhammer The Old World which can be considered a revival of Warhammer Fantasy Battles, and obviously lore is subject to change there as they revisit everything. And honestly, in my personal opinion, I think it would be a big shame if they reworked the lore and got rid of all the stuff that made it so unique in a sense. Yes, it wasn't really unique per se because it was taken from our own real history, but I thought that that always had a certain charm to it. I'm rather curious to see what you guys think. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various different links to social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord where you can get in contact with the Great Book team. Also in the description section below is an affiliate link with Element Games where you can buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using our special link and also using our special code, both of which are in the description below, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us. Honestly, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A special thank you to our patrons, Gibraltar LUSC and Ryan Birch for subscribing to us at our fame level. Honestly, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to our patron, Edward Huell, for subscribing to us at our king level. Mate, you're super awesome. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.